Hey, how's it going guys? Mr. Boss for the win here and in today's Red Dead Redemption 2 video We're gonna be talking about 15 really helpful and useful tips and tricks that I wish I knew about from day one And also some cool things sort of scattered in here as well So let's dive into this day and let's get it started number one Did you know that you can throw your lasso further and there's actually a way to do this? So for the longest time, I always thought you just aim and threw your lasso when you were close enough. No, it turns out that if you hold left trigger and right trigger, that Arthur will actually swing his lasso like above his head, and this will allow him to throw it a greater distance. So if you think a horse or a person or an object is too far away, well, you probably just haven't been using the lasso correctly like myself, and you can actually sort of swing it around his head and it will allow him to throw it much further. I can't believe it took me this long to figure out that is incredibly convenient. Speaking of things that are incredibly convenient, I don't know if this is at every single post office, but at least in the San Denis post office, you don't have to go inside to interact with the station clerk, which means you don't have to go inside to buy train tickets, to pay your bounty, to send mail, to receive mail. And although this is something that's kind of small, it is sort of like a nice little quality of life thing because when you do go inside the post office, Arthur can't run. Uh, and then when he leaves, he can't run. So that's, you know, five to 10 to 15 seconds that you have to add on right there. Again, it's not something that's super huge, but you can pay your bounty outside. And I just figured that out. And to me, that's really cool. Something else that's really cool is how dynamic Rockstar has made the NPCs in Red Dead Redemption 2. In fact, they've even made NPC bounty hunters. And what's kind of funny is if you find these NPC bounty hunters in the world, if you kill them or if you take their cargo off the back of their horse, which is someone that's wanted for a bounty, you can actually steal that bounty and bring it to the sheriff's office. I thought that was incredibly funny and also extremely cool. So this brings up a good point. Pay attention to the NPCs that you see passing by on the road. They might be bounty hunters and they might have a person of interest on the back that you can turn into the sheriff office yourself and get a nice little reward. So just something to keep in mind right there. Tip number four today, if you ever set up camp in the wilderness, just leave it. I have always been tearing down my camp and there is real no benefit to that because if you don't tear it down, you can teleport back to it anytime you want. So if you tear down the camp, you're going to have to recreate one every time you want to build one. If you just leave it up, you can always teleport back to it much quicker from your horse or wherever. So once again, for the longest time, I had always been in a terrible habit of tearing down my camp. You don't really need to. I think once you get past 500 meters, it gets removed anyways. So just leave it up and you can always teleport back to it. Number five today, this is something I found to be pretty funny. And this is also another amazing detail from Rockstar. Arthur has obviously two options that he can talk to people. For the most part, it's greet and then antagonize. Well, what's funny is a lot of his greets can then be followed by a really funny antagonize. So if you greet someone first and then antagonize them, they're gonna go together. They're not going to be just random words that Rockstar decided to throw together. So for example, there was this one instance where I went up to someone, I'm not sure who it was at the camp, but Arthur said something along the lines of, you know, it's good to see your face again. And then I immediately hit antagonized and he said, it's the kind that I could punch pretty easily. So it's like it, they went hand in hand, which I thought was really cool detail from Rockstar. So you can obviously try that out and experiment for yourself if you want. Number six today. So this is something I have known about, but apparently I have been doing this wrong. If you want to calm down your horse, uh, instead of clicking in on the left thumbstick a lot, hold it down. It works way better. So if your horse gets freaked out, if they see, you know, a predator or another animal, I have just been trying to click down on the left thumbstick and sometimes it would work, sometimes it wouldn't. Well, apparently that's because I was doing it incorrectly. You want to just click it and hold it until you get like the plus uh, horse sign on the right hand side and then the horse will be fully calmed down. So again, little things like that are important to know because apparently I've been doing that wrong since day one. Number seven today, if you're looking for an easy way to level up your dead eye, 
just go to the general store and buy premium cigarette packs. So this is actually a trick we use to collect all 144 cigarette cards easily, but doing this will also level up your dead eye insanely fast. So if this is something you'd rather pay for than go out and shooting a bunch of people or doing whatever else levels up dead eye, this is an, a really easy way in which you can do something like that because every single pack that you open is going to be getting you dead eye points. Number eight today, at your camp, I've talked about why doing chores are important. They will level up your honor and also improve your dead eye. However, if you complete all of the livestock chores at your camp, you can actually make a little bit of money too. So this might have to do with the chickens. If you have to clean up uh, after them, do one of those chores, you can actually send a wagon into town for like eight to $10 a time every time you do it. So it's not amazing money, but it could be a nice way to pay off some petty bounties you might have. So doing chores, again, is important, and now you have another reason to do so. They could actually become lucrative for you, and that is pretty awesome. Number nine today, we've talked about this tip in the past. If you want to go on like a hands-free cruise control ride, just select a path on the map and then go into cinematic mode, and your horse will start to go there without you controlling it. However, a lot of people have been saying that this is working for them, but their horse is going really slow. Well, you might not have known that you can determine the speed at which your horse goes. So when you go into cinematic mode, if you actually go into there really fast, like if you tap A or the sprint button for the horse, it's gonna start galloping. If you just hit X or A once, it's just gonna go on a light jog. So the speed depends on you. There's not one set speed in this cinematic cruise control mode. It all depends on how fast you ultimately want to go. Some people might not have known about that. The next thing that's pretty interesting is you can apparently be struck by lightning. So I saw this video posted on the Red Dead Redemption subreddit by a user, Evo Tricks, who was literally struck by lightning in camp. So I knew that there was lightning storms that could happen throughout the world, but I never knew that Arthur could literally be struck by lightning. How insane is that? In the comments right now, have you ever been hit by a bolt of lightning in Red Dead Redemption 2? I can only imagine this is one of the rarest things to happen in game. So if it has happened to you, please let us know in the comments down below. But bottom line, watch out for lightning as it could actually strike you, which would not be good. Moving on, our next tip today, you can actually use wagons in game to help you hunting. So if you happen to find a wagon like this that has like a little bit of a back part or a storage compartment, you can actually use this for hunting and you can drop pelts and other items in the back. Because we all know there's a limitation to how many items your horse can carry, but there's no limit to how many things you can fit in the back of something like this. The only thing you have to be careful about is obviously the items falling off. When they're on your horse, they're on there for good unless the horse slips or something like that. But with a cart like this, sometimes they might fall out of the back. That also brings up another point is that you can't sell every single wagon you find to a fence. So number one, you might not have even known this, that you can sell wagons to fences. Yes, you can, but you can only sell certain types. So it's sort of like the same thing in GTA 5 if you brought a car to the LSC and it said it was too hot to be modified. It's sort of the same thing here. The fence will only accept certain types of wagons. This is something that's really simple, but I love the level of detail here from Rockstar. If your horse is higher than you, Arthur will do like this special animation getting on. He'll have to like gather more energy to swing himself up. I thought that that was pretty cool. So we learned that you can jump on horses from above and obviously you can get on horses if you're a little bit below them. Arthur just does kind of a cool animation to get up, which I thought was pretty neat. Number 14 today, did you know that there's different types of hit markers? So if you get a white X when you shoot someone, it means that you tagged them means you did not kill them, you've just damaged them. A light red hit marker means that you've killed someone, and a dark red hit marker means that you fatally wounded someone and that they're ultimately going to bleed out. So that's something you might not have known about, that there's three different types of hit markers in the game. 
This can be useful for hunting. This can also be useful for when you're fighting other players. And this also sort of stresses the importance of targeting those fatal or critical areas on not only animals, but also other players as well. And last but not least today at the number 15 spot, uh, if you actually kill someone on a wagon, you can't loot their body while they're in the wagon. And if you're having a hard time getting them out or they simply won't come out, what you can do is use your lasso. The lasso is becoming the most versatile tool and you can lasso people off of the wagons and then once they are on the ground, you can loot their bodies and get all the gear that they have. So anyways, that right there is 15 things you need to know in Red Dead Redemption 2. Some tips, tricks, cool features, and just general things that you might not have known about. If you guys did go on to enjoy this video though, a like rating would of course be awesome. And also subscribe to my YouTube channel if you are new or you like daily Red Dead Redemption 2 videos like this. With all the way guys, like I said, thanks so much for watching. Take care and I'll see you guys in the next video.